Once you're happy with your model's performance, let's try deploying it to a smartphone or a microcontroller. To begin, head to the Devices page. Click Connect a New Device and show the QR code. Use your phone's QR code scanner to automatically connect your phone to the Edge Impulse project. Once connected, click Switch to Classification Mode to automatically build and download the project to your phone's browser. Give access to the microphone if requested. Your phone's browser will automatically begin running inference with your trained model. When it says sampling, try saying one of your keywords. You should see the confidence score of that word go up to over 0.5. Hello. Stop. Other words should be labeled as unknown, and saying nothing should result in it predicting the label noise. Close the browser tab when you're done. Now, let's build the project for our microcontroller. Head to the deployment page and click the Arduino library option. Click the analyze button to see how much flash and RAM your model will take up along with how long inference is expected to take on an 80 megahertz ARM processor. Four milliseconds seems pretty fast, but if you head back to the MFCC page, remember that feature extraction for each second of audio will take around 212 milliseconds. That's right, feature extraction is actually more processor intensive than the machine learning part itself. If we're doing this in real time, we can employ a few tricks so that we're not having to compute the MFCCs for overlapping sections of audio. Head back to deployment, select your Arduino library and click build. Wait a moment while the project builds and downloads to your computer. Just like we did with the accelerometer demo, open your Arduino IDE and go to sketch, include library, add.zip library. Select your downloaded library zip file and click open. Go to file, examples, and find your edge impulse project name. The microphone example works just like the phone example we saw earlier. It samples for one second, computes features, and performs inference in a sequence. It makes you wait between instances of taking those samples. It's an interesting demo, but it's not very practical. What we want is to continually listen for the keywords so it operates more like Alexa or Siri. So open the microphone continuous example. The structure of this program should look just like the continuous accelerometer demo. You'll find a very similar EI printf used for printing messages to the serial console. However, recording audio data is a little more complicated than recording accelerometer data. Because we need to sample at 16 kilohertz, the BLE sense board uses its hardware pulse density modulation or PDM controller to do the work for us. In this sketch, we just call the Arduino PDM library to set up all of that for us. However, we create a double buffer so that one buffer gets filled while the other is being used in inference. The other interesting bit is that only 5,333 samples are collected at a time, which is one third of 16,000, or one second, of audio data at 16 kilohertz. Every one third of a second, the MFCCs are computed from our one third of a second audio buffer. These MFCCs are added to a larger buffer that contains the MFCCs for a full one second of audio data. And every one third of a second, this full one second of MFCCs is fed into our model for inference, which gives us the probability scores of all the labels. We can pick the highest score to figure out which class was predicted. As new audio is recorded, the last one third second block of MFCCs is dropped, and a new one-third second block of MFCCs is added to the front. Once again, inference is performed with the whole one-second set of MFCCs. At this point, the model probably recognizes that something has been heard, but it doesn't recognize it as one of the keywords yet, so it might predict the unknown label. The final bit of the word is heard, and the MFCCs slide back again, dropping off the oldest chunk. The newest set of MFCCs is computed and stored at the front of the MFCC buffer. Inference is performed on this whole MFCC buffer again, but this time we have the whole word, so the model predicts hello. This process continues forever. So long as we compute the MFCCs and perform inference faster than the audio buffer can fill up, we're good. If you look in the loop function, you can see this call to microphone inference record. Find the definition of this function and you can see that all it's doing is waiting for the audio buffer to fill up. If the buffer is already filled by the time execution gets here, it means some other code took too long and audio samples were dropped. If this happens, you should get a buffer overrun message printed to the console. You have some time to run your own code in the processor, but not by much. If your code takes too long, you could start causing this buffer to overrun and missing audio samples. Let's upload and try this example. When the uploading process is done, open a serial monitor. You should see the predictions being printed to the terminal along with the time it takes to perform the feature extraction and classification. 
Try saying your keywords into the microphone. Note that you need to be pretty close to the microphone for it to pick up your voice. Hello. Stop. You should see the probabilities of those keywords rise. Because it takes about 124 milliseconds to run feature extraction and about 11 milliseconds to run inference, that's about 135 milliseconds every 333 milliseconds used for machine learning, which doesn't leave you with much left. If you look at the order that the labels are printed in, that's the order that they're stored in the system. So we can use that to pick out one of our keywords if we want to trigger something to occur. For example, an index of two should give us the hello label, and we can compare its threshold to something like 60%. If it's over that, let's print a message to the serial monitor. Note that I'm doing this just after the run classifier continuous function has been called. This ensures my threshold check is performed every one third of a second. Just below here, you'll see that the stats are printed to the serial terminal once every second, which means they miss two of every three inference results. Upload this to the Arduino board. Now, whenever I say the keyword, hello, and the confidence score is above 60% for that label, you should see Hello World printed to the screen. I hope this has given you an idea of how to get started making your own keyword spotting system on a microcontroller.